Consumers want to know the facts about the products they buy, but America's agriculture landscape is not easy to navigate. Between different companies, scientific advancements, government regulations, advertising campaigns, and an unhealthy amount of myth and misconception, anyone would be hard pressed to make sense of it. That's where real ag comes in. From the producers who make your food to the store where you buy the final product and everything in between, this is real ag. We are all part of a very complex system that allows us to live in the ways we are accustomed to. Farmers may know this better than most, as they realize it's better to work with your neighbor than against them. So how can farmers see an ally in a possible competitor, and how can they work together? One method is by joining a co-op. Joining together in a cooperative can have many benefits, and some of them include having an assured source of supply and market for their products. Other co-ops help farmers make decisions, as well as provide information on their crops, soil, and much more. Successful cooperatives can benefit their farmer members and others in many ways. But even the most successful cannot be all things to all members. We will be taking a look at co-ops and the advantages they can give a farmer as we speak to some cooperatives on this episode of Real Ag. Production of Real Ag is made possible in part by an underwriting grant from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by farmers. Agricultural Cooperatives, also known as a farmer's co-op, is a cooperative where farmers pool their resources together to obtain better yields and a good market value for those yields. Farmer-owned cooperatives make an impact on agriculture and have been for a long time. In the United States, almost two million farmers are member owners of over 2,000 cooperatives. Farmers are not only in charge of their individual farms, but also have a share in ownership and a say in the operations of the larger cooperative business. So what is a co-op? Well, a co-op, I mean, it, it's, it, it's a business similar to a corporation. In fact, it, it is a corporation, but the ownership model is slightly different. So, so a co-op is owned by what we call member owners, which are typically farmers. Uh, they invest in a co-op where they have one vote per member. Um, they pay an initial membership fee in most cases and based off the patronage they do through the co-op, they build up equity levels within that co-op. Uh, those can uh, be paid out at the end of the year as patronage, depending on how profitable the co-op is or built up uh, within the cooperative's balance sheet as equity that is eventually retired to that, to that farmer as that equity matures. Pride Ag Resources is a large local cooperative based out of Dodd City, Kansas. And we probably circle about an hour either direction to 45 minutes. So as a large cooperative producer, our job is we're owned by our producers and we sell them the inputs and we help them market their grain. Uh, we sell them feed, fertilizer, chemicals, all the th inputs that a farmer needs to be successful in farming today. Servitech was formed in 1975 uh, as a cooperative owned by other farmer-owned co-ops to help farmers address agronomic challenges that they faced in crop production. Uh, since those very humble beginnings, uh, we've added laboratory services, so we do soil and, and, and feed and plant tissue testing, uh, as well as a precision ag division that helps growers address opportunities in precision agriculture that will help make them more productive and more profitable in today's challenging agricultural climate. There are two primary types of agriculture service cooperatives, supply cooperatives and marketing cooperatives. Supply cooperatives supply their members with inputs for agricultural production, including seeds, fertilizer, fuel, machinery, and analysis services. Marketing cooperatives are established by farmers to undertake transportation, packaging, distribution, and marketing of farm products, both crop and livestock. Farmers also widely rely on credit cooperatives as a source of financing for both working capital and investments. Undoubtedly, the, the, the level of, of, of competition in the ag retail space and, and ag suppliers has a direct impact on farmers and ranchers uh, throughout western Kansas and, and, and frankly all across the country. Um, the role that Servitech agronomists can play is to help them 
uh, work through that variety of choices that are available to make the best product choice, whether that's seed, fertilizer, uh, herbicides, uh, planning rate, uh, planning time, uh, make the best decisions that they can, and then evaluate the effectiveness of those decisions at the end of the season to improve their efficiency uh, and profitability in, in times where there's narrow profit margins and low commodity prices. The role of Servitec really is, is to bring together information from a variety of sources into a single platform uh, that informs the grower of the conditions in each field that they manage. So we will, we'll pull information from a variety of sources, some that we own, others that we subscribe to, and it'll range from local weather to imagery information, to soil moisture information, yield information, planning history, et cetera. Combine all of that data into a stack that the grower can look at then and, and essentially drill down through from the top. If, if, if we layer those maps in and at the top is the yield map for this year, they can use that yield map and drill down through the data layers to make the most informed decision that's possible uh, on, on how they manage that field and then make adjustments necessary to improve productivity for future years. Certainly, Servitec keeps a, a, as close a pulse as we can on, on what's driving markets, whether you know, that's, that's expansion of cotton acres uh, through, through kind of the southern half of the United States, uh, canola. Uh, a dozen years ago, the, the, the emergence of the canola industry and the opportunities that that, that that presented to growers. The role Servitec can play is to be as well informed as possible on those emerging crops so that we can give growers the best advice that they can find to help them achieve that level of, of profitability that they desire. So our, our role is going to be to help them reduce risk and to be as well informed as possible to take advantage of emerging market opportunities. The variety of services that are available today certainly include soil moisture, uh, aerial imagery to take a picture of that field, the ability to put a GPS boundary around it that makes it unique and associate data sets with that, uh, to build out a fertility map so that we variably apply fertilizer across the field to match the productive capability of the soils in that field. We can do the same thing with seed. We can vary the amount of seed that is planted, even the variety of seed that is planted in certain areas of the field to increase or really match the genetic potential of the seed to the productivity of the soil that it's being planted in. But I think the biggest advantage that Servitec brings to the table today for growers is the ability to stack those various data sets, the ones that matter to that grower whether that data is generated by equipment that we put in the field, equipment that we, or, or services that we subscribe to, or information that comes from the grower's tractor and combine itself. We can stack all those data layers into one spot. They can go to one location, they can use their phone, and in one spot they can see all of their fields, they can see what the priority actions are that they need to take to best represent or best manage that crop at, the, at whatever stage it is during the season. And then at the end of the year, again, as we talked earlier, we stack those data sets and help them make an informed decision about which practices work the best, which ones need to be modified, help them make those modifications to gain efficient, an additional level of efficiency in the next season. The producer cooperative business model helps farmers to market their products together and to collectively buy the supplies and services they need to operate. Marketing together helps scale their access to consumers and may help guarantee the sale of their products. Buying supplies and services together drives the cost down for farmers, thus saving them money and providing them access to goods and services that may not have been available to them individually. This cooperative way of doing business empowers farmers in their independent operations by offering scale and security in the competitive landscape of food production. A cooperative can help the farmer in many ways, including expanded markets, enhanced competition, assured source of supplies, quality of those supplies and products, improved service, and overall increased farm income. Uh, well, when you look at back at when co-ops formed, it was access to markets. So farmers coming together collectively to market their crop uh, provided a, a very seamless way to get scale to where they would have that bargaining power with that end user. Uh, you go back 
you know, over the years, co-ops typically, uh, you'll go back in the, the 80s, they were much smaller then, um, but they were tied to, to farmland industries, which is a very big regional co-op at the time that kind of helped with that scalability. Today, we don't have that. So you're gonna see co-ops ranging from size today to, to your local co-op. Uh, it's one, one community, one county, up to co-op today in Kansas that serve multiple counties. Uh, for instance, Garden City Co-op today, we're covering uh, you know, the southwestern third of Kansas, about eight counties today, uh, which traditionally, you know, back when a lot of those co-ops were formed were single community co-ops. As farms get bigger, the co-ops have had to get bigger to keep up with the, with the pace of scale that we see at the farm gate today. They own it. This is their company. We just happen to work for them. So all the profits are shared with them. And uh, our board is made up of a several member board, all member owners, and two associate board members. And so they have the say in the way the, the, way the co-ops ran, uh, the direction. They set the, they set the goals and the vision of the co-op. My job is to implement them. Cooperatives benefit the economy of rural areas in a number of ways, including added community income, stronger rural communities, and goods and services for non-farmers. There are also benefits to consumers, including quality products, varied services, new products and processes, lower production and marketing costs, as well as an improvement of the general welfare of the community. We work with a variety of sizes of farmers. Um, uh, you know, I would say the average for us is, is going to be that mid-sized to larger farming operation where the owner or manager is really challenged to make sure that they, they can stay on top of the changing conditions in each field that they manage. And so the role that we play at Servitec is to fill those gaps for them, to visit that field on a weekly or a bi-weekly basis, to use technology to help uh, track the progress and, and, and any concerns in that field between visits to keep that grower as efficient uh, and as well informed about what's going on agronomically in that field as we possibly can. There's a lot of family farms that, um, you know, they got their niches and, you know, they're, they're financially stable. Uh, a lot of it because of it's been in the family for such a long period of time. And it may not be that person's uh, full uh, income level. So they probably work in town or they probably do something else. So they, it'll be fine, they'll succeed. But it's, it's a challenge when you have uh, some farmers that have so much equipment that they've got to cover so much acres to warrant that kind of, of uh, price tag on equipment and the inputs. With all the ways a cooperative can help, there are limitations. These limitations include production control, farming bases on labor input, price fixing, middlemen functions, market power, influences on prices and services, reserves accumulation, and restrictions by inherent characteristics such as frailties of human nature, limited objectives, decisions by large numbers, member attention and support, and member competing needs for capital. Despite those limitations, many cooperatives help farmers stay on the cutting edge of technology. Technology evolves all the time. And, and so for us, it's been a very evolutionary process in terms of the technology we make available to growers. For years, uh, we've worked with growers on, on mapping fields with, with GPS so that we can help them with seeding uh, uh, applications, with fertilizer applications, uh, to make sure that we vary uh, the seed or the amount of fertilizer to fit the, the opportunity for that area of the field to produce versus another. We really tailor, help them tailor that application. Today we have access to, to imagery from uh, satellite and, 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 and fixed wing aircraft sources that allow us to take daily uh, readings of field conditions, of crop conditions uh, to help advise that grower. Uh, we have the ability to measure soil moisture throughout the profile, the profile that those plant roots are growing through, the ability to measure soil moisture real time and, and advise the grower on how much to apply and when to apply irrigation water to have it have the greatest impact on crop productivity. Uh, 
uh, and, 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 and the most efficiency that we can. Certainly in Western Kansas, that's a great challenge. We have a limited resource. Helping growers apply that properly at the proper rate and at the proper time uh, is one of the areas that we really have, have uh, developed uh, technologies that inform the grower uh, to, the, to the highest level that we possibly can. In the early days, uh, our agronomists were working hand in glove with typically smaller farm operations, family-owned operations where, uh, where their consultation, their expertise was around helping the farmer understand soil sampling and the role that that could play in, in fertilizing the crop, matching fertilizer to the anticipated yields of that crop. This was before we had any, any GM seed. Uh, we didn't have the ability. We, most of the, of the herbicides that exist today weren't in existence at that point in time. Uh, so we were still cultivating fields. That's what I grew up in as a kid, driving a tractor and cultivating corn and soybean fields. Today, the, the evolution of farmers to being, to farms to being larger operations uh, where management is more distributed, so you, it, it's not nearly as centralized as it used to be. You may have a, a farming operation that, that covers multiple counties, uh, several thousand acres, um, uh, tens if not hundreds of fields, a variety of crops, a variety of people who are influencing those, those cropping decisions and, and the role we play today at Servitech is to provide that glue, if you will, that agronomic glue to make sure that all those decisions flow through uh, a central point and, and that they inform management to make the best decisions that they can. So, so we still provide that boots on the ground agronomic service that, that Servitech is known for throughout the Midwest. But, but in addition to that now, we've enabled that to be extended over more acres through the use of technology. Using technology to fill the gaps between the times that that agronomist is in the field uh, to, to continue to inform the grower uh, with the best information that's available to them. It, it goes back to the scale of the farmer. So you're going to see your, your smaller farmers that, you know, they're the type of farmer that they just still like to sit in a tractor cab and farm. Uh, you're going to see your bigger farmers today that are more transactional. They think more like a CEO. So you have to approach that business differently than, than what you would other farmers. Uh, not that we couldn't cater our business to both. We just got to understand when, when we deal with a certain size farmer or, or a certain type of farmer that our value proposition has to change. Uh, technology today fits, fit, fits both types of farms. I mean, with the technology we bring to the farm gate today, it's really about driving return on investment, whether you're a small 1,000 to 2,000 acre producer or you're a 20,000 acre producer. It's about driving the efficiency on your farm and adapting our services and products to fit, fit those needs. Well, today, I mean, when our, our department that I operate in, which is, we call it our precision ag department, but really it's ag technology. So we're always keeping an eye out for what kind of new technology can we bring to the co-op, uh, evaluate and determine if there's a return on investment there that's applicable at the farm gate. Once we identify those products, then, then we'll go to the farm and, and initially it's about letting that, letting that owner get, get comfortable with the tool and then you know maybe we take a field or here, here or there and, and test the product so they get comfortable with it and then eventually scale it across our whole farm. Uh, we, we've done that everything from, you, you know, you hear about the internet of things. So soil moisture sensors, you know, we usually start with one, one or two fields and build up to the whole farm. You know, other, other ag technology platforms we have today from the, your basic precision agriculture, which would be your variable rate applications. Uh, those start kind of the same way. We evaluate what that farm looks like from a field by field perspective, determine what, where the variability lies and what kind of technology can we implement to make that variability pay off at the end of the day. Uh, you know, when you, look at, when you look at our environment we're operating in today, obviously we're in a limited rainfall environment. Uh, at the same time, we have depleting water, groundwater resources from the aquifer, so we got to farm better and farm smarter because as, as we lose the ability to irrigate a lot of these fields or the well capacity behind a lot of these fields, that's when the variability starts showing up. And that's when the yield differences start showing up. So some of the tools we bring today help that farmer manage that variability that he didn't see years ago when we had plenty of water out here.
Pride Ag Resources is a co-op that helped uh, discover Servitech here in Dodd City. And we work closely with Servitech. Uh, and in that technology and agronomy side, we are doing uh, probes, moisture probes, weather stations, and those kind of things. Uh, the technology uh, producer today, uh, through our system, can take a cell phone and he can turn on and shut off the sprinkler system and he can actually look at the wind speed, humidity, moisture, uh, depth of soil moisture at three or four different levels. And he can, if he had rain, uh, is receiving rain at that point in time or had received that night, he can look at the weather bucket and it'll explain to him, show him exactly what's taking place at that field. This is important for large producers and most producers because they're spread out so far. And it, timing's everything. So, you know, instead of drive 45 minutes to go work at a field you can't get into, you can go a different direction. So it's all about time management. Uh, you know, the, the biggest pressure today is just maintaining, I think, the liquidity in their balance sheet. I mean, obviously we're into uh, several years here of, of decline in commodity prices that hasn't lent itself to good on-farm profitability. So making sure that at the end of the day, you know, why we may not have a, a black year, we're not eroding that, that balance sheet uh, and working capital that, that they've built up during the good times and, and making sure that we can keep that somewhat stabilized. So when do, things do turn around, we can grow the bushels again, grab the income again and build those balance sheets back up. I think that's, a, that's the main thing farmers are focused on today. Where, and a lot of that goes to, you know, how can we control costs? And that's where a lot of our ag technology can come in and help that farmer. You know, just because a field traditionally has been fertilized for 200 bushel, uh, take an irrigated cornfield, for example, you know, past law our farmers have put on a blanket rate of fertilizer to hit common 200 bushel yield goal. Uh, when we look at that field though, it has different yield environments. Some areas may yield, you know, up to 300 bushel, some may yield 180 bushel. So let's make sure we're not putting 200 pounds of fertilizer for a 200 bushel yield goal on an area that's not gonna hit that just because of the inherent qualities of, the, of that type of zone and that type of, of field, uh, we just can't drive that yield. So let's take that fertilizer we traditionally put there and move it to a zone within that field where we can push yield and hopefully at the end of the day, uh, increase the profitability on both of those zones, whether it was a low producing zone or a high producing zone within that given field. So so it's easy at Servitech to get excited about the work that we're doing with, with those stacked sets of data. The challenge is 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 we're doing that on, on a small number of the total acres that we influence. We're all, we, we influence about a million acres a year uh, across a, an eight state region in the Midwest. So. So we, we, come, we work from the Texas Panhandle uh, across western half of Oklahoma, uh, the state of Kansas, eastern Colorado, the state of Nebraska and Iowa, portions of Missouri, South Dakota, and Minnesota. In that wide swath, the level of technology that's being applied to those acres is still pretty small. So one of the biggest things we can do is begin to influence more acres with the level of technology that's available today. That's our first big win for feeding the world, is influencing more acres tomorrow with today's technology than we did today. And, and there's a tremendous opportunity for that. To me, that's a really exciting thing to do, whether, whether it's getting on more acres that a grower has or going to a grower who has yet to, to be convinced that this is the right change to make. Uh, in either of those cases, Servitech has an offer where we can begin to build their level of interest in that product. And the end result will be more bushels produced per acre, a more efficient crop, fewer inputs per bushel of grain produced, and the ability to feed a growing global population. All of those things are positive impacts uh, for us as our global population continues to grow. I'm bullish for one because of the American producers. They've always been the most innovative. Uh, and, and you take a look at, you know, er, everyone's seen the world population studies where you know, by 2050 we're going to be X number of people and so many mouths to feed. I, I think that that holds some truth at the same time. You know, I look at a lot of the economics 
Uh, we're going to see a, an explosion in middle class uh, diets in India and China, which is going to be uh, uh, very favorable for the American producer, whether they're livestock or, or grain. Um, those people are going to want to upgrade their diets, uh, which requires a lot of the products the American farmer sells today. Uh, the biggest thing is we just got to get those export channels open back up so we can produce and do what we do best. From the field to the community, a cooperative can be very useful to the modern day farmer. From helping analyze their soil to getting the best market value for their product, a cooperative can help both small and large farmers alike. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Real Ag on Co-ops. As always, you can check out this and other episodes of Real Ag by going to shptv.org. From the producers at Smoky Hills Public Television, this has been Real Ag. Production of Real Ag is made possible in part by an underwriting grant from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by farmers.